what we're going to do uh, next is we're going to take uh, a stream, and we've learned about streams already in the previous class. We're going to take a stream, and we're going to parallelize it. And when we parallelize the stream, the Java Virtual Machine will look to see how many processes are available, and will create a new task and assign a new task to each of those processors, uh, each of those cores, and it will effectively allow parts of our program to run in parallel. To do that, we're going to need a good example. Um, I think maybe we could try and call this method here just to see if uh, that seems to work. Now, I looked at a couple of these last time. Uh, I want to mention this particular video to you. This video is a copy of uh, a presentation that this gentleman, I don't know who he works for, did at a Oracle uh, conference. Uh, where they're talking about how it is that you take a program that you have and, and break it into parallel parts. And it's, it's kind of long. It's 48 minutes long. But this was one of the best presentations that I have seen on this particular topic. And I'm only scratching the surface today with you, obviously. But if you ever need this in college, this particular presentation is the one that I would refer you to where he goes through. And I had a lot of misunderstandings about the parallelization process. I'll talk about one of those misunderstandings here in a minute. But he went through all of that and straightened me out and also showed me how it works inside the machine. The, the Java virtual machine has this thing called a fork join pool, which is the machinery that it that uses to parallelize a process. And there's just a lot to know here. So if you need this, this is the one to look at. So let's let's just look at a simple example first before I go here. Uh, let's say I have some sort of stream here. I'm going to take out this thing here for a moment and imagine that I had some sort of stream here. So this might be a typical streaming sequence that we've talked about in the past. Now, what you can do here is you can take the stream and call a command called parallels like that. And you can also call a command called serial. The first thing that I need to sort of clear up in your mind is that if you do this, right, you might be under the mistaken notion that it'll run serial over here, then the stream will become parallel, and then this part will run parallel, then you'll turn it back serial, and then the rest of it will run serial. That is not how serial and parallel streams work. What happens is that when you get to the terminator, when you get to the terminating command over here, it checks to see what was the last flag that was set between parallel stream and serial stream. There's a single flag at work. That flag determines whether the entire stream is going to run serial or parallel. And the only thing that matters when you get to the terminating element right here the only thing that matters is what was the flag last set to? Here, what was the flag last set to? Look, it starts off serial, I turned it parallel, made it serial again. What was the last flag values it was set to? Yes, Mr. Michael. See how the last one was serial? It's going to run the whole thing in serial. Okay? So the only way to get it to run parallel is to is to have it set to parallel and, then, and not change it at the end. All right? So this does not allow you to switch back and forth between parallel and serial. It doesn't do that. The other thing you need to understand is that even though you ask for a parallel stream, it might compile, it might run, and the Java virtual machine might deny you. It might say, I'm not going to give you a parallel stream. Discuss with your partner at least one good reason why that might happen. OK, Mr. F, sorry, can you think of one reason why you might be denied your request to have a parallel stream? Uh, actually, that is theoretically possible. That's never happened to me, but it is theoretically possible that there's so many other you know, the other cores are being in use and they're not available to you. But what's a much more simple reason? Yes, your machine only has one core. You only have one core. You can't ha you can't use multiple cores. You see how that works, right? Now, when you get denied, it doesn't give you any kind of a message or a warning or anything like that. It just runs the program and just doesn't tell you. Okay, so the only way to tell really that you're improving is to do what I'm saying, which is to measure the times and see if the times decrease. If the times decrease from serial to parallel construction, then you know that parallelism is actually happening. 
The other important thing to do here when you measure the times and you have the uh, methods running is you want to make sure that you want to print out the name of the thread that's running. That will tell you basically if multiple threads are going because you'll be able to print out the name of the thread each time it's the method is being called. You'll be able to see the parallelization taking place. See what I'm getting at? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a name of the thread right here. Okay, so that will allow us to determine which thread is running. Now, by default, if you parallelize the stream, the, the Java virtual machine will add one new thread for each core that it enlists in the work. So here, my machine has six cores. It'll create six threads, one on each machine, right? One on each core. And the first thread will always have the name what? Main. Main will be the first thread. And main will be reused to run part of the job. And the other five threads, one will be associated with, with each of the cores. And they'll all be running simultaneously. That's the idea. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call this method again. And we're going to leave it here. I'm going to use a, a stream this time, though. I'm going to say int stream, uh, and I'm going to say range 1 to 10. And remember that this is going to run nine times, right? Because it goes 1 and one through 9, and it doesn't do the last one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for each, and I'm going to call this method right here. I don't know what was wrong there. I'll just use the old, I'll just use the old uh, syntax like that. So we're going to just write it like this. And uh, you can see here, and then I'm going to take a measurement before and after, and then I'm going to print the amount of time that it took. So right now, I'm still running in serial mode, serial mode. So let's run it. And you can see that the thread that ran each time was the main thread. That was being printed inside here, right? And you can see that the entire thing took about two and a half seconds. Because I ran this nine times, and each time the delay was 250 milliseconds. So this is an answer that pretty much met my expectation. So what I want to do now is I want to start to try to activate the other cores in my machine. And to do that, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a parallel statement. All right, that's all I have to do to activate the cores now. So let's run it again. And you can see that now, instead of taking two and a half seconds to run, the whole thing took only about a half a second to run. Because what's happened here, and I want to explain to you where these names come from, uh, what's happened here is that some of the cores in the machine have now been activated. So that's pretty exciting. Now, you can see here that these are the names of the threads that have been assigned by the, the parallelizing machinery. And typically what happens here is that one new thread is assigned to each core. So here, these are the worker threads and the machinery that the Java virtual machine uses to parallelize your process is this thing called the fork join pool. And as I mentioned before, that lecture on YouTube that I pointed to before, that has a great discussion of how the fork join pool works. If you're doing some simple stuff like this, you don't really need to know how it works. But for anything more complicated, you need to understand that fork join pool. And here are the names that are uniquely given to each of the various uh, threads. Each one belongs to a different core. So you can see here the threads that are belong to the cores 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then there's also one here for main. So there's a total of six cores that have been activated now, which means that all the cores in the machine have been enlisted to help run this program. And that's why the, the runtime of the program has shortened to as much as it has. So that essentially is the idea behind parallelizing.